Hello, hello, my lovelies, and welcome to my review of Disenchanted, the newest Disney film on Disney+. Plus. It is the sequel to the beloved film from 2007, Enchanted. So, without any further ado, grab your snacks, grab your drinks, and let's jump into it. Roll the intro. Welcome back, and before we begin on the plot of this film, first, let me ask for you guys to please watch all the way through. A girl is broke and she could use the watch time, as well as a like and a subscribe. I'm not going to do the usual spiel at the end besides what I talk about, so just keeping that in mind, please hit the like and the subscribe button. It helps my channel out a lot, and the watch time is the most important thing, so hopefully I entertain you for this amount of time. So let's jump into the plot of this film. The plot of this film takes place 15 years after the 2007 original movie, and Giselle and Robert, her lawyer, Prince Charming, have settled down in New York City, and Giselle starts to feel like maybe New York City isn't really the happily ever after place that they wanted all along. They even now have a baby of their own named Sophia, and of course Morgan, Robert's daughter from his first marriage has grown into a teenager, and as teenagers do, uh, I understand uh, from personal experience, does not want to move from New York City. She has friends there. She likes the city. She loves the city. I know personally, I kind of was obsessed with New York City as a teenager, and I always wanted to go and visit and look at all the museums and all the history that's around the town and wanted to have a New York experience. So I was like, yeah. Why? She want, She doesn't want to leave the city. I mean, I understand, like, now as a, as, as a grown-up, like, how bad New York City can be and, like, smells and stuff and just random weird people. But, like, when I was a teenager, I'm looking at this from, like, when I was a teenager perspective, and if I lived in New York City, I wouldn't want to leave. <laughs> if I lived there, I wouldn't want to leave. So, of course, Morgan doesn't want to leave, and they go to this town, and they want to have a nice and happy life here because it reminds Giselle a lot of her home of Andalasia. And they get everything settled in, and as they do, stuff of Morgan's burns up. It lot, Lots of things just go wrong for this poor girl after moving, so I already felt bad for her. And then um, Edward and Lisa, if um, yeah, um, I was kind of stupid when I said, when I wrote this down for my review, I said, I kept calling Nancy Lisa, which is Idina Menzel Menzel's character. So if you hear me say Lisa, just know that I mean Nancy and I am so very sorry for the inconvenience. I feel incredibly stupid. So whenever you hear me say the name Lisa and you get confused, just know I'm talking about Nancy. I don't know why I wrote her name down as Lisa when I was writing my uh, my script for this review, so enjoy the rest of the video. If you don't know, was like Prince Edward from the first movie, he and Robert's girlfriend in the first movie get together at the end, and they go and they rule Antalasia together. So they come out of Giselle's well, and they start singing and everything, which I love, love, love Edward, because I still remember to this day the scene where he stabs the bus, and he's just like, I've been dreaming of a true love's kiss. And then he gets ran over by bikes. The funniest shit in a Disney movie still to this day. So when I seen them, I was very, very happy, understandably. I got to see some more shenanigans from the totally naive prince man, so I loved that part. Anyway, they come through the po they come through the well and they bring a gift to Sof to Sophia to Sophia, Sophie. Anyway, they bring a, a a magical wishing wand to Giselle and the baby, and Morgan is in the room, and the whole while they're singing about how this baby is a true daughter of Antalasia, and of course, Morgan, you know, being a stepkid, feels really hurt by this, and she even, like, hints at Giselle that she doesn't like that 
Giselle just kind of sat there and is just like agreeing with them. And it's just like, yeah, well, if you don't need a fake daughter of Antalasia, I'll be in my room. So this understandably upsets Giselle and a couple more shenanigans of her trying to fix this with Morgan later. She's at her wit's end and she makes a wish with the wishing wand to make their lives a fairy tale life. And there are some, of course, if you understand this reference. But don't you know, all magic comes with a price. And there are some stipulations to the wish, and Giselle tries to fix the wish before she becomes a wicked stepmother by the stroke of midnight. And that is where, that is the whole plot of this movie. Now, let's go on and talk about the characters. Of course, let's go on and start with our girl Giselle. Giselle is, of course, once again played by the phenomenal Amy Adams, and it was good to see this character back on the screen and she jumped right back into the role like she had never really left it. I, I, I'm just convinced that this is how Amy Adams just lives is just like because <laughs> she has is just grace and poise in this movie and I loved it so much. I was really mad on Morgan's behalf. I kind of had beef with Giselle in the first half of this movie for how she was treating this teenager. <laughs> I don't know if that was just my own experience talking, but like, I have experience with kind of a naive parent that doesn't understand your feelings or anything and just kind of like washes over them and is just like, oh, you're depressed? Oh, that's fine. Kind of thing. And like... I was just mad on Morgan's behalf, like her clothes get burned, Giselle moves her away, Giselle calls her not a true daughter of Analasia, when they used to bond over the fact that Giselle was from this magical animated world and that Morgan was super into it and everything. So like, ouch. I don't know if that was just my own experience talking, but I kind of didn't like the way that she was treating Morgan, but it, she did come around in the end. I kind of don't like the way things were resolved between them. It felt like she should have apologized and not when she's about to die, so... Anyways, that was just my little thing with that. I'm, I'm glad that they fixed things in the end. So, yeah. I was kind of... I was just kind of baffled at that. Um, I really liked seeing Amy Adams get to play this more sinister, evil stepmother type. And seeing her switch back and forth from evil to good in this one scene, she flipped so effortlessly. I don't know if these are cuts, but if she did that as one shot of her flipping back and forth from evil to good, the switches were so flawless. And seeing Amy Adams play more of a villain instead of always the happy and cheerful and, you know, princessy, you know, good people types, it was really refreshing to see her take on more of a villain role. And I was eating every second of it up. I loved, loved, loved seeing that. So let's move on to the next character. Let's move on to Robert, who is Amy Adams, or Giselle's husband in this movie, played by Patrick Dempsey, who you might know as uh, Dr. McDreamy from uh, Grey's Anatomy. If you're old like me and you had to survive through episode after episode of Grey's Anatomy with your older siblings. <laughs> How's that going for you? How's that medical trauma? <laughs> if I have to hear another so sad song at the end of something, as I can't watch Grey's Anatomy. You know, I did not even know that Grey's, Grey's Anatomy was still on air today. I didn't even know that. I had, to, like, I clicked on Patrick Dempsey and apparently he, their, uh, Grey's Anatomy is still going on to this day. How? I don't know. But Patrick Dempsey is Robert. It was nice to see him again and the chemistry that him and Giselle have on screen is just so, so cute. And there's this one, this one line that he says when the spell is broken and Giselle is finally back to her normal self and he runs up to her and he's like, my Giselle, you've come back to me. I'm like, it's 
very good delivery, sir. I loved his performance in this movie. I have no qualms with Patrick Dempsey at all in this movie. On to the next character. Let's talk about Morgan now. Morgan is the stepdaughter, and she isn't played by the same actress as the other person that played Morgan in the 2007 movie, which is weird because the girl that played Morgan in the same movie looked about the same age and she did make a cameo in this movie, so she was free. Um, I don't know if they just wanted to have an actress that could sing better or something because the actress was there that played Morgan. She was an extra in one of the scenes, so, I mean, she was there, um... I think it was just mainly because of, like, they needed an actress that could sing and could sing alongside Idina Menzel, which we're going to talk about later, because they actually gave Idina Menzel some songs in this movie, which I was grateful for. I liked Morgan. I liked this actress that played Morgan quite a lot. She goes from being this angsty teen to almost being a Giselle clone in the Cinderella-esque type of... Um, role of being, you know, the maid and the stepdaughter kind of thing. And she's just very graceful and everything. And she sang beautifully. I liked this actress's singing voice. I think she could carry a very nice tune. She was very good. And it was very reminiscent of like Snow White mixed with Cinderella because they even give her like a ripped blue dress in this, and I really, really liked her character, and I liked the range that this actress had, and I felt like her journey was a really good one. I really liked her overall. Now we're going to talk about Edward and Lisa. First thing I want to say is that they did not give Jason, James Marsden, the first thing I want to say about Edward and Lisa, we're going to talk about Edward first. They did not give my boy James Marsden enough screen time as Edward, as ki now King Edward. I forgot now he's a king. King Edward. I needed more of this man. I think he was still my favorite character. I liked Giselle in the first movie, but I freaking loved Edward. And I think it was a huge disservice that they not give James Marsden more screen time. I... He, he jumped right back into the role. It was hilarious. It was great. I loved Jason Marsden as Edward once again. Still a little peeved that he was singing about how the baby was a true daughter, but not M Morgan. But he did make up for being his usual self. I appreciate that. And as for Lisa, played by the iconic Disney princess voice of Elsa herself who was in the first movie before she got the role of Elsa. They didn't give her any songs in the first one, so I was glad when they finally let this woman sing. And plus, in a movie like this, where they're taking little bits and pieces of famous Disney princess media, and they have the voice of an actual Disney princess with, uh, with the cast, why not give her a song? I mean, to me it was a no-brainer, but I was glad nonetheless to see it because I was kind of scared that they wouldn't even let her sing, but I was glad that they let her sing. She sang this one song about the power of love, and it was so good. I, I, I actually really liked it. I think it was one of my favorite songs in the movie, and she didn't really have a lot of screen time. Most of her screen time was spent singing, but I didn't have a single issue with her. I just wish we would have had more of Edward. I think that's my one of my biggest gripes about this entire movie is we did not get enough Edward in this movie. Yeah. Yep. So, let's just move on to the next thing. <laughs> well, the music in this movie was good as it should have been. Do I feel like some of the songs didn't exactly hit as compared to the original? Yes. But there was a couple songs that I particularly liked, which was the one I already mentioned that Idina Menzel sings. There was this one song I liked that was a duet between Amy Adams and, hang on, I wrote her name down, Maya Rudolph, who is the, playing the character of the, basically the leader of Morgansville before the spell takes place, and she's kind of like the queen of the town, 
So when the magic takes effect, it really does turn her into an evil queen. So her and Giselle, as Giselle is turning into this wicked stepmother, kind of butt heads and they sing this song about being badder than the other. And it's a duet, and I really, really liked that duet. I, f I, I freaking loved it. I thought it was great. So, the music had some bangers. Not as many bangers as the original. So, let's go on to my final thoughts. As I put in my thumbnail, is this a worthy successor to Enchanted? Both yes and no. Let me explain. On the first part, it does seem like a good, it's a good movie. I'm not saying it's not a good movie. I'm just saying that it didn't f feel like the first one felt. That might have been because they changed directors for this new movie. Um, I personally just, it didn't, writing wasn't as strong as the first movie. And where the first movie did this thing, the first movie did this thing where they turned a lot of fairy tale tropes on their head. Like, Giselle was supposed to be like the damsel in distress, but by the end of the movie, she's saving her Prince Charming. She's saving both princes. She's killing the dragon. Um, it took the fairy tale world into the modern world where. They still did that to a sense where all the magic from Antalasia to keep this spell going is being sent into the modern world to for this wish of Giselle's fairy tale life. It's sucking all the magic of Antalasia away and is basically destroying it. And I just felt like it didn't do exactly what the first one did. It tried, but it didn't do it exactly, if you know what I mean. I hope you know what I mean. So, I just feel like writing could have been a bit stronger, personally. It does live up to the original. Don't get me wrong, it does live up to the original. Probably just not as much to the same caliber, is what I'm saying. The set designs, the costuming... Oh my gosh, the costuming. I'm giving a round of applause to costuming. I don't think costumers get enough praise, but as somebody that sews and is very interested in fashion, especially like fantasy fashion, like these movies, they did such a cool thing that I've only seen in like a few movies with the costuming. And Giselle's costuming in particular is they slowly work in these dresses that are more known with, like, evil or wicked stepmother or villain types. Like, she first starts off wearing her usual pinks and purples and blues and all these other things. And then when the spell starts taking effect, they're in this clothing store and there's this cream white dazzly gown with a very low neck and very, like, pronounced fluffy shoulders. And Giselle even points out that, like, Oh, low-cut dresses like that, flashy one, are for, you know, more, more wicked stepmothers. And then she buys it as the magic is, like, corrupting her, and she buys the dress, and then we see her wearing it. And then as the magic takes more and more effect, and she's turning more and more into this wicked stepmother role, and is almost fully this wicked stepmother, she's wearing these bold dramatic, dark-colored gowns, and this one red gown is just mm, so good. Amy Adams looked phenomenal in this gown. Holy crap, did she look phenomenal, phenomenal in this gown. I loved what costuming did. Costuming... Appreciate costumers, people. Because, wow. And then, like, the music was great, sets were great, the actors were great. I just feel like this movie would have benefited from a little bit better writing. So, I do feel like they did pull off the second Enchanted. I don't really have an issue with this movie besides the writing could have been a little bit better. That's basically my only qualm. Um, what do I give this movie? I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10. I enjoyed myself. It was so good to see these characters again and just get it being able to see this. And also, I want to say this. 
This is something that I don't want to forget. Disney, give us back 2D animation. These segments in this movie that were 2D or hand-drawn animation, I was obsessed. Let me tell you, seeing that style again in a movie, it was like a nostalgia drug. It was like seeing art that I haven't seen in forever again. And it was just living and breathing art again on screen that I am more familiar with with Disney movies. And I want Disney to bring back this style of animation in some way. I want them to bring back the animation like this. I'm going to get maybe a small clip and put it right here so you guys can see what I mean. But I need animation to be back like this again. I don't care how much money it costs, you're fucking Disney. You are Disney. You can afford this. You afforded it with this movie. Make another full-length animated feature like this, and I will give you glowing reviews. I swear to God, I might not have that much sway on this fucking platform, but I will go to bat for that style of animation. I fucking will. I love that style of animation. I'm done ranting about it. That's my review. <laughs> That's my review on this movie. Bring back 2D animation. Make sure you hit the like and the subscribe. Please, please do. May I, I appreciate you. If you have watched this all the way through, you are a real one. You are a goat. And if you want to join my randonauts, I think that's what my community calls themselves, the randonauts. I think we're still workshopping the name. I'm not that familiar. I might have to do a poll. So if you want to see the poll and you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing, I talk about books, movies, TV shows, anime, anything that I find interesting, it goes on the channel. That's why the name's The Random Show. It's random for a reason. You look around the channel, I'm sure you'll find something you like. I love you all so, so much, and I hope you have the best day. Bye.